a few years ago I went to France and something really interesting happened. I'm about to go to France. You're like the king of that face. Things were not going well with my girlfriend at the time. And little did I know that we'd actually break up two weeks after I got back. My father Richard had recently become engaged to a French lady by the name of Corinne. I came off the train, walking slowly down the platform with my coat and hat and scarf, waiting to meet this lady. The only thing is I didn't kiss you on the bridge. He was completely smitten. And so there I was, a free trip to France to meet the new fiancé. I'm now in Paris. Uh, I have landed. The flight was hell. The French air smells different. It was my first time in another country and I was just so excited to be there. Well, we're going around checking out the Arc de Triomphe. No, say it properly. Arc, Arc de, de Triomphe. Arc de Triomphe. My father and I have had a patchy relationship. And because I didn't speak any French, I quickly felt isolated. We have a French dog. This dog only speaks French. <laughs> if you say, here boy, he has no idea what the hell's going on. Here boy. Here boy. See? French. And Dad was the only person who spoke any English. But he wasn't going to the nth degree to make me feel at home. I sit there and I'm getting very frustrated with not being able to communicate, not being able to speak, not being able to express myself because no one understands what the hell I'm talking about. But more than that, I don't understand what anyone is talking about. For all I know, they could be plotting our murder. One of the most commonly used tools in this household is the uh, French-English dictionary. Pulling out my French phrase book, you know, trying to say stuff, I feel like a complete idiot. Richo is trying to decipher, hang out. Priorities in conversation changes from trying to make a point to just communicating, to just trying to have one person understand what you're saying. Anyway, they took me to a place called Mont Saint Michel, and I was told by Corinne that it was one of the wonders of the world. We'd been driving around France, and we came over this final sand dune when I saw this huge castle. walked up this little cobblestone walkway and then there were these French restaurants either side and this it's really we just stepped into another world of everything. There was this really old graveyard like it was ancient and then the abbey at the top the cool thing about this abbey was that it's actually built from the rock of the island. When was this built Corinne? 11th century. 11th century. Yeah. Right. This is unreal. Then we come out onto this lookout when a French voice comes over the radio basically saying, if you're in car park so and so, you'd better move your car because the tide was coming in. And then the next thing I knew, this entire 18,000 square kilometre bay just flooded with water. I just, I felt instantly better. All of the pain and all the tension had all just flowed out of me and it just wasn't important anymore. I'm going to make a wish. All underwater. Last sunset in France for me. We're leaving now. This is the... Thank you. I'm so happy. Red. Au revoir. Night night. Have fun. I'll uh, see you all in another life when we are old cats. <laughs>